Hey. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everyone, tonight um, for our group Nepal download. <laughs> uh, so I think you've probably all heard it already from some leader or, or other that um, gathering the thoughts and the feelings can be a bit tricky. There, there's so many things that we brought brought back with us in our hearts and in our minds. Um, <clears throat> and we just wanted to share it with you collectively because it's just so nice to hear it from so many different voices. Um, I'm Maggie Humphreys for anyone that doesn't know me. And I met <clears throat> pretty much all of the leaders that I was, that's here tonight, mostly for the first time. I met Chloe um, briefly at convention, um, Lorraine as well, briefly at convention. But, you know, Danielle, <clears throat> excuse me, and Christina, it was really the first time while we were away. And it's my job to share with you tonight the lighter fun stuff of what we did. So we were all roomies. <laughs> um, we landed in Kathmandu on the first day and <clears throat> pretty much that afternoon was just running around and getting this and trying to fit all these ideas and things in, huh? And then next day off we went into the hills five hour bus ride. There was, um, that's when the toileting situation first smacked me in the face and other places. And everybody very quickly got comfortable, had to pretty much just with sharing our emotions and how it was going because you needed support. You needed to know that everybody else was struggling in that department. Um, I'd never used a squatty potty. I don't like fart jokes. I <clears throat> had to just get over that. Thank you, Christina, for the trumpeting comments. Um, because, yeah, when you're using those squatty potties, they are great at helping you release things. Um, and, you know, you do hold on for a little while, but you do then learn how to release. So that gives you a little bit <clears throat> of insight into some of the conversations that we had. Um, but, yeah, we all slept together for four nights on a floor, in a school, <clears throat> and gee, they took care of us. We spent our days while we were in Makwanpur, that was the town. And side note, um, you can't just rock into these villages that are in the hills there. You just can't. You actually have to go on one of these doTERRA trips. So it's pretty inc incredible for that reason. <clears throat> we made incredible friendships with these children. Um, my words are not even going to nearly express that. You know, you rock up and you feel emotional, but then the next day that grows and then the next day that grows and you, you're travelling, you know, off to the hospital where we helped, you know, pave the front of the hospital and inside there was a whole heap of sanding and lots of different teams and leaders coming together, basically, having to work together, a whole bunch of boss people trying to get a job done. You know the saying, Indi too many Indians, not enough chiefs? Oh, sorry, too many chiefs, not enough Indians? We just had to get on, hey. And we did. In the end, you know, not that there was ever a problem, and that's another beautiful message that we all got. Um, it was a really incredible group of humans. Um, <clears throat> so every night we'd go back to the village, be fed amazing Nepalese food by these um, beautiful chefs that, again, doTERRA and Choice Humanitarian, who were the people that we partner with. I'll let somebody else talk about Choice Humanitarian and how amazing they are. Um, you know, we were there for four days. It was really hard to want to leave. It was really hard to say goodbye. And we were told, you know, when you leave this place, um, it'll become like a bit of a past memory. And the memory's still there and it still feels really powerful and strong when you think about it and the messages are still strong and the fire in my belly is still strong. But yeah, it kind of does become a lost memory in all the doing because we got to Pokhara after a 30, what was it? No, it was a nine hour bus ride. Um, again, more motion sickness, all of those, all of those things, people in close quarters. Um, and then there we were again in Pokhara doing more amazing things which doTERRA had organised for us. Hey, um, so <clears throat> overall it was a whole heap of fun. Overall it was incredible experiences that you just wouldn't, you just wouldn't do on your own. And I think everybody, all of the other leaders will vouch for that. Um, we were kind of sh sh shepherded this way, is that the word? And then kind of told, ushered, 
that way and we're told turn up at this time and we'd cross the road and Jared would be there, um, you know, blocking traffic and we would just like walk along like <laughs> we're in fairyland holding hands, skipping, you know. And I think a lot of us are probably mums in this group. It's an amazing holiday to just go away and be totally immersed and be of service to people. So um, I'm going to share my biggest takeaway, which I don't think anyone's going to touch on. And that's um, I, my natural or my, my initial um, response to wanting to help would be, here, just take my money. Just take all my money. Here's some food. Take my food. Um, oh, my God, I want to give you this. And so the first few days we were told, you know, please, please share your oils, roll them on, don't give them. And, hey, come on, our job's about sharing samples, right? Like, not, don't tell me not to share a sample with this little child who has nothing and it's not running down its face. And that, that's my thought. You have nothing. You need money. You need my things. Actually, no. I walked away understanding that, and this is through choice and our incredible company doTERRA that there's far more power in yes pulling funds together raising money but educating and i mean educating on all the different levels children at schools adults you know in farming in basic um sanitization you know how to wash your hands after you've use the toilet, how to clean a toilet down, the importance of using a toilet, not the side of a mountain, which some of us could have used that lesson um, <clears throat> or taken that lesson. You know, so I walked away really feeling like, yeah, okay, be really prosperous, Margie, do the work. And then it's time and working with companies that are on the ground, giving that time to educate so that you walk away and you haven't just left them with money that they've spent you've left them with skills. doTERRA's next level in partnering with companies like this. And that's why there's real long lasting change. So the money that you're donating to Healing Hands and in purchasing oils is going where it should be going. We've seen it. Um, so there's my little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to hand over to Chloe um now and chloe just share your little bits of magic there and nuggets with us hi guys i'm chloe for those of you that don't know me um i'm going to apologize in advance my words are still struggling to come out and process what we've just been through so if i stop and start and get a little bit jumbled that's why it's um definitely been a lot deeper than what i had anticipated i knew that it would change me as a person but not to the level that it has. And I'm still processing, so I can see those changes that are still coming up for me. Um, but what I really wanted to touch on was the importance of getting to Diamond. Um, you know, it, it's, it's such an amazing place to get to on a personal level. You've achieved something pretty epic when you get to Diamond. You know, we, when we're celebrated and we get to do our Diamond Walk and we start to see nice, beautiful commission paychecks around the 15th of the month and all of that's really great and beautiful and I think we can get caught up in the stargazing in that which you know I don't want to downplay that because it's an amazing part of why we do what we do but there is another flip side to getting to diamond that I think has really been drummed home to me personally through going on this trip and it's getting to trips like this so um to get on a co-impact sourcing or a healing hands trip the requirement is to reach Diamond and then they invite you on this trip. Um, if they can't fill the spots, I know they then open it up to Platinums um, and then they keep moving down if they can't fill it. We, um, we had a few really lucky, great, beautiful people that were um, awesome to come and join our team and come over to Nepal with us and get to experience that before they hit Diamond. And I think it's such a beautiful thing, but hitting it, it really amplifies our act of service. That's what I took from it. I, I don't see it now as a desire, like, oh yeah, I want to hit diamonds, amazing, I get to be recognised as a diamond. It's our responsibility now to do that because of how giving you can be in that space. That's what I really took home from it. I thought, you know, how amazing that I have this abundance for my family now, but more so amazing that I have this abundance that I can give to my team and people all around the world by experiencing something like this. Um, this experience is really, for my team personally, I've even seen it in the last couple of days, um, really shone a different light on why we do what we do. And it's really showed 
me that we need to get out of our way. You know, we need to stop with the excuse mentality with, you know, I, I can't do the classes and I don't know anyone and, and I'm nervous and I'm scared. You know, after being in a place like Nepal, I think if somebody went up to a Nepalese lady and handed her the compensation plan and said, here's a bunch of oils, go, go. off you go. I don't think she'd sit there and go, no, I'm, I'm really nervous. I don't think I could do that. I don't know anyone. She'd probably turn her head and look at her children and doesn't know where that next paycheck's coming for to feed her kids and get off her ass and get moving. And that's what I kind of, I put, my, I put myself in those shoes and thought, sorry, I'm going to swear here. <laughs> no, there's a kid. I'm not, I'm not going to swear. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> we have such an opportunity here to give not only to us and our families and our teams and the lives that we touch with the oils, but for these people. And they need us to show up for them constantly. So diamond is not a desire. Diamond is a requirement. If you step into this space and you're prepared to take on this business, that is what you should be shooting for. Not just for yourself. Yeah, do it for yourself. It's fucking awesome. Oh shit, I swore, sorry. <laughs> it's really awesome. But also do it for these people too, because we have all seen, and I know that we can all testify to this and we'll probably get a bit teary speaking about it, but we have seen how far beyond the bottle these oils actually go. You know, we hear it, we read about it, we, took, we, we see, you know, words written about compact sourcing and healing hands, but when you see firsthand that impact that it's having on that ground level... Can I, can I add something? Go. Um, we met this beautiful man, Pratik, over there, and we met his amazing team. Um, and at the end of it, we were all like, we're, you know, you do such great work, Pratik. It's so awesome. Your team's so awesome. And he just turned around and said, this is my country. Like, I have to do something, but none of you do. And he just, like, wept in front of us. And he was just like, you know, I have to help my country, but none of you have to. And the fact that you are, you know, like his grown man just crying. And, and it hit us as well because you know, we don't have to, but the fact that we can just by doing our job was pretty, you know, to see this grown man crying in front of you, um, it's pretty humbling and it, and, it, and it puts it all into perspective because, yeah, we, we don't have to and many of us can trade our time for money in other ways but why wouldn't you do something like this you know working and doing such good um by doing something we love so yeah that really hit home for me when he stood up and said you don't have to do this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. and i think you know when you come to that space where you, you know we all get blockages in our business things come up things make us feel uncomfortable um, I'm a big believer that all the greatness happens on the other side of fear. But after now experiencing that space, my mind goes to now, what would that woman do? How would she treat that? And that for me was a really great thing to take home and also bring to, bring to my team as well, thinking, you know, we are so blessed to have these opportunities in front of us. So incredibly blessed. They don't have what, what we have. And we are so blessed that we can really create that change that continues to create change in countries that don't necessarily matter to us. Do you know what I mean? You know, when you see that you are a part of that change, wow, man, your heart space. <laughs> and I will say that um, <clears throat> Pratik did want us to bring that message back to all of you. He understood the concept of the fact that we're working with teams and that was his message to, to take that back to your to your teams and please please keep doing what you're doing because he is also saying it is of direct benefit he he was advocating for the fact that whatever doTERRA is doing is helping us immensely um and we we heard from <clears throat> numerous people that told us that after the earthquakes it only took doTERRA 24 hours to get the money into the country, but not just the money, the resources. Because you can throw money at this, but there's only so much actually money can do. You've actually got to have relationships. Hello, what do we do? Um, and doTERRA is the best at it. And you've also got to be able to pull those strings to get resources into the country. And there were a couple of people, a few people actually, and it's like, oh, doTERRA. Oh, yes, doTERRA. So know that that message comes right to you guys. Hey, Chloe. 
Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. you know, and even just, you no, know, it doesn't matter where you are in your business. If, if you're not a diamond yet, you are still a part of this progressive movement. Like you're still, you're showing up for one for yourself, which is so important, but two for these people as well. So kudos mm -hmm. to all you amazing humans who have, stepped into this space because it can be vulnerable and scary and confronting but it also can be so expansive and mm. there is so much growth and there is so much to give in this space that other people don't get to experience mm. and for me I, I feel so incredibly humbled and honored that I get to share in that space and I feel even more honored that I've been able to experience it firsthand on the ground that I want all of my team to get there and experience that because like I said, it's one thing to read about it and it's a whole nother thing to be in that space and that energy and actually see what you're creating is having an impact. Mm. In and Chloe, um, what about the connection of, yeah. between the doTERRA people that you met? That was something that really um, kind of took me by surprise. You know, I have a, I'm really lucky. I have a really beautiful team that we've that we've built over the last 18 months and I adore all of them and I know some of them are on here love you guys um, as a greater community I'm a part of team bliss and we have that in itself is such a beautiful team as well isn't it Danielle we're lucky <laughs> um, and I thought that was amazing having those people walk into my life in the last 18 months I found my tribe and my community and what a blessing that was as a country mama of three kids now have like minds that I could tap into any time of the day that just got me and were on the same page as me. What I didn't expect that I would take home from Nepal is the amazing relationships that were created over there. Um, that has completely changed my world. It's changed me on a personal level. It's really brought me out of my shell. I know there's a few other people on the call here that it's brought them out of their shell and their comfort zone as well, which is just such a pleasure to watch them blossom like that. Um, but also too, on a, on a business front, it's been such an empowering experience for me who I would consider to be a freshie, I'm pretty new, um, to be around people that had been in doTERRA from the beginning, from like eight years ago when it landed on Australian soil, to speak to them about their knowledge and their experience and the things that they would and wouldn't do. And then to chat with Christina, who loves figures that I hate <laughs> and really getting like insight into that and you know just picking their brains on things that you know you don't just get in your little bubble you know so on a on a business front it's been awesome I've learned more in 10 days about my business than I have in the last 18 months which is just fabulous <laughs> operation fat tree thanks Christina <laughs> but on like on, on a personal level I've added more beautiful beings to my realm and and you know, we've been home, what, not long, four days, five days. Ooh, can we go back? <laughs> and we have spoke, we've spoken on Voxer every single day. Like the connections that were made over there, only, only we know what that experience was for us and to have other people that you can share that with. And now that we'll turn up at doTERRA events and, you know, have those big giant cuddles, that's, I didn't expect to take that away. I thought I would have gone over there, done my thing, been in my little bubble and come home. But I've made some really amazing friendships. And it's something that um, I think is, you know, like I said, beautiful on a, on a personal level, but on a professional level, it kind of takes you out of that awkwardness that you, the conversations that you might not want to have with your team because you're so directly connected to each other in terms of growing and building and all of that. You've now got this other pocket that completely understand what you're going through but have no direct impact on it. So you can be completely, brutally and lovingly, openly honest with what's going on and be like, help, how do I deal with this? What, you know? And you can have those conversations that maybe you've been holding back with your own teams, which is awesome. Trust me, it's, it's, it's so great. I love it. So that was a big takeaway from me that I didn't expect. So another reason why you have to get on these trips. Mm. And Chloe, <clears throat> on a lighter note, or maybe not so light, can you just tell us what oils have been helping you whilst? Well, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Look at so, that. <laughs> I'm the woo-woo in the group, I think. <laughs> I get all emotional. Christina's got crystals, I think. Christina's got crystals now. I obviously rubbed off a little bit. I know Lorraine had a big part of that. But my blend that I've been using to, trans to transition coming home is Sandalwood, spikenard, and console. 
So console, obviously, for my heart space at the moment, that's going through a hell of a lot of processing. It's such a beautiful oil to support and make sure that it's kept open. Uh, sandalwood, the oil of sacred devotion. So this is my devotion to my purpose and my business and my devotion to what I can create around the world through change by collaborating with doTERRA and also my devotion to myself because I think we often forget about ourselves a lot. And spike nard, the oil of gratitude, because I am so in bloody grateful for what I've just experienced, but also too, it's one of our co-impact sourcing oils from Nepal, so it just seems fitting to add it into that blend. That has been going non-stop in my diffuser since I've got home to help mm. integrate everything into this little body of mine. Beautiful. Thanks, Chloe. <clears throat> um, so I think, Lorraine, if you're there and your Wi-Fi is okay, what Chloe was talking about, I think, leads on really nicely to um, what you're going to talk about in belief and the culture that we've got because, you know, our company does it well and it's not by accident. It's how doTERRA rolls, isn't it? <clears throat> Lorraine, are you there, doll? Maybe not. No, I can't even unmute her. Okay. That's okay because it still works. Danielle, are you there, love? Yeah, honey. Hello. Do you want to share with us your little bits and your nuggets and what oils you're, have been, you've been relying on? Yeah, actually. So I, um, it took me a couple of days to kind of come up with, with well, first to kind of work out how. Absolutely. I um, oh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah mate. Ho yeah. You can't Hold your horses. Me? Hold your horses. <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you. Should we just let it go in case she falls out again? All right. Yeah, let, let, let it go. It go. <laughs> go on. <laughs> nah, she's she's a lag. <laughs> you go, Danielle. All right. Okay, so back to the oils, right? So it took me a couple of days to kind of work out. First off, I'm Danielle, by the way. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones uh, that wasn't quite diamond um, that were, was given the opportunity to come along to Nepal. So I'll come back to that. But on those, um, on those oils, so it took me, like Chloe said, like days to kind of process how we were kind of feeling and, and how where we were going to take it because I, I feel like I can probably speak for all of us that we we felt quite overwhelmed with all of the feels like there was one point uh, maybe on the second last day where I sat down with uh, Jared at Moon and Jared Moon's the the head of co-impact sourcing and I kind of was a blubbering mess and I was just telling him, I'm going to give away everything. My poor husband, I'm going to go home. I'm going to say, let's put the house on the market. Let's sell all our possessions because I had so much guilt with what we had seen with so little that people were, had, the Nepalese people had, and I felt so guilty for having the abundance that I did. So, um, and to his, his, he was so quick to, to turn around and say, don't you dare do that. Don't you dare do that. You actually owe it to them to go out and be as prosperous as you possibly can so that you can give more. Because if you don't have anything, you can't give anything. But if you have everything and you have that heart, then you can give with the heart. So that it changed my perspective straight away. So once I came home and kind of processed, I was let's F and do this mode. So I was like bringing out the winter green green for me uh, basis that winter green is a productive oil to move you away from inert to productive. So that was what winter green was for, for me. Lemon myrtle because it was sitting there waiting for me when I got back from Nepal and lemon myrtle is all about leadership and stepping into leadership. Um, and I threw in some um, blue tansy as well. So blue tansy is all about inspired action. So those three productive leadership and inspired action is what I'm using at the moment to really propel me forward to make sure that I can share with justice what we experienced over in Nepal. 
So what I really want to focus on um, more so is actually um, because this is what I didn't really have a lot of clarification around before I went to Nepal was actually the difference between the co-impact sourcing and healing hands. So I actually thought they intertwined and they were kind of the same thing, right? They worked hand in hand, but they are completely separate entities that really just work synergistically together. So uh, co-impact sourcing is uh, a model that we work in the countries that we are sourcing out, the, the, the developing countries that we're sourcing our um, oils from. We work with that company, we work with that economy, we work with that country to empower them to run their own businesses, to own their own farms, to have fair work conditions, to have the right tools and the resources available to them so that we can get the purest oil um, from there. And it's all, it's all done under the umbrella of, of helping those people, not doing it for them, just helping those people. So... We went and saw uh, when we our second day at Makwanpa, we went and uh, visited one wintergreen um, distillery there. There is a hundred dotted over Nepal, 15 of which are brand new that doTERRA have built. Now, one of the things I was expecting in my little naive little mind before I went away was when these oils, I was kind of expecting them, you know, there's this harvest to come in and all these leaves to be shift, shifted off at, uh, chipped off into some kind of big prefab warehouse where they would be distilled down, right, with all these distilleries, um, all these, um, you know, kind of amazing setups. But what I didn't expect was an oversized beer keg in the middle of a field <laughs> with a fire underneath it and a bucket catching the oil, separating it from the water. And then when he went to show us this, this beautiful pink wintergreen oil, uh, he collected it in a in a in a in a empty bottle, um, and he you know shared it around and and let us kind of massage it into our hands, and then he recapped the bottle, and then Jared later told us that those bottles would be collected, uh, would be kept in his house until he had enough to then move on to the next uh, phase of, of the distillation process. Um, so it was so kind of rudimentary, but so awesome as that happening because as we're getting that rundown of how this works and how this you know 500 kilos of wintergreen leaves go into this big keg um we see this beautiful woman all of 40 kilos coming down the hill hauling a big ass sack of wintergreen on her freaking head carrying a babe in her arms and then she drops drops the sack onto the scale and we're all like scurrying up to see the next phase of the process and and then she it gets it gets weighed and she literally within minutes is given is doled out rupees for her for her three hours of work that morning uh, her husband comes in behind her and does the very same thing and is paid on the spot as well um what one of my highlights though was um and this took a little bit of reflecting later on to kind of think about what I kind of had witnessed though, is that earlier that morning, we, every morning we got a debrief of what was happening that day um, and we would focus on certain areas. So that morning before that wintergreen walk, that wintergreen field walk, we had been told that the going rate for uh, per kilo of wintergreen was 12 rupee. So when that lady was paid, um, when that beautiful lady was paid, um, we heard Jared uh, say to them, what was the, what, what's the rate? And the distiller had said back to him, nine rupee. And so there was some conversation going on there and I'm kind of doing the calculation and got my phone out thinking, wow, that's like two bucks. She got two bucks for that big bag and three hours work. Like, what's going on here? And then she kind of, he had turned around and, and he said, no, 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 no. 12 rupee um, and what the distiller was saying between the translator was that what had been coming in lately was a lot of twigs um, more twigs less leaf so less yield of the wintergreen oil and so what Jared was saying was no 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 they will be paid 12 rupee I don't care what is what's kind of happening with the yield he said either you make a difference or we make a difference but they will be paid 12 rupee per kilo 
So that was just, that just goes to show just how committed doTERRA are to make sure that everything is fair as you know, if they've got a, if they've got a finger in the pie, then they're going to make sure that everything is done with transparency and integrity. So that was just literally the whole theme of the trip. That's, you know, I knew that, that how transparent doTERRA were coming into it. And I had so much belief in their product, but they just always find a way to blow your mind even more, whether it's the people, whether it's a business model, it's, it's everything. But so that's, that's co-impact sourcing, right? They create new content all around the crop. But um, healing hands is different. So healing hands is when we look at the hospital that we went to help with. Okay. So the hospital cut ground uh, a year ago, but prior to that, doTERRA went, or doTERRA and Choice worked together. Now doTERRA always worked with another non-for-profit company that has a presence in, the, in that country that they're working in. So with Nepal, it's Choice Humanitarian. Choice Humanitarian are just the most incredible organisation, um, second only to doTERRA. <laughs> um, and they, they're just the perfect partner to be, to be working with here because their, their take on everything is, like Margie said, with the not, you know, not giving the gifts, um, it's, their take is that we will give you the tools, we will give you the resources, we will teach you how to do it, but ultimately it's up to you to do it for yourself because there's nothing more disempowering than handing someone something on a silver platter um, and they have no, um, no, no way of, kind of, of feeling how it was to build it in the first place. They don't get to rejoice in, in looking back and seeing how far they've come and what they've done. Yeah. Um, they just get it handed to them. So, and it's not sustainable for them. And it is they it's can't. sustainable. They can't, mm. just, they can't just depend on Westerners to come in and just give and throw money at them. They, they need to be able to know how to get themselves out of poverty. So that is what Choice do and doTERRA has exactly, exactly the same focus as well like think about what we do in a class guys we literally will go we go sit in a land room we go give them the tools we go give them the resources but we don't shove that oil down their throat and we don't rub it all over their body before we leave or sometimes we do but <laughs> we're not there every morning doing our doing an aromatic dressing for them right are we so we give them all the we give them all the tools we give them all the research we give them all support but Ultimately, it's up to them to change their life. So that is exactly what Choice and doTERRA Healing Hands do. So with the hospital, they said, what do you need? The community came back and they said, we really need a hospital. And so Choice and doTERRA said, right, well, we're going to put together the first initial funds. We're going to put up the first $5,000. Then we're going to go approach the government or the council of that area. And we're going to ask for a contribution from them. And then whatever is the deficit, it's up to you guys to raise the money for. And then they will use all of their on-ground people. So they had a Nepalese, um, Nepalese engineer for the hospital. They had a Nepalese uh, team of tradesmen. So when they went up to get their certificates at the inauguration, it was all Nepalese people. And it, it was just, it was wonderful to see how they owned it. And they were just grateful for our input for it. They were just one, you know, they were just grateful for it. But on that as well, like don't, Healing Hands still has that beautiful uh, philanthropic heart as well because at that time, a doctor, had, the doctor from the hospital, the existing hospital that was there, which had a really super inadequate birthing room, um, and this hospital services 100,000 people um, and it was in, the original hospital was in absolute shambles. But the birthing suite didn't it didn't have a heater, and we're, you were at the, the foothills of the Himalayas here, guys. So, in in winter, it's below zero degrees, and a lot of ba there's a lot of high, high uh, mortality rate for babies there. So, uh, the doctor um, just put out a request to see if it was possible for us to fund DoTerra to fund a um, heating uh, system of some sort, um, and literally, literally on the spot, Pratik, who is our um, our um, on, on ground choice humanitarian um, liaison said straight away, yes, 
um, healing hands have committed to that, they're, they're happy to do that. You know, so we have got the power to do things like that. Um, but we were working alongside them all the time. Like when we went and laid the bricks, we paved the bricks in the morning. <clears throat> Our paving team left a, left a, maybe just a few lines that we couldn't quite fit the, <laughs> the tiles into. And we came back in the morning and we go like, oh shit, you know, we hope, <laughs> we hope they're finishing it off. And they did, they finished it off beautifully. It was like this, this awesome teamwork together. So that, that is the difference. Okay. We, we need both these, these entities. We need both um, co-impact sourcing and both healing hands. And I think even personally for myself, when I, when I run a class and I'm, um, you know, I, I run a class, maybe, maybe two to four classes minimum a week. And I, when I talked about previously, when I talked about co-impact sourcing, I talked about, you know, that we would go into developing countries and source the, um, the, the, the plant from the environment that it thrives best in. Um, and we go and help those economies. But that was literally probably all my conversation around the co-impact sourcing. So for me personally, it's going to change the way that I communicate with my, um, with, with, with my people, the people in my class, because I, I need to show them exactly where the purchase price of their oils is going and it's not just affecting their life it's affecting so many multiple people that have had a hand in bottling that oil mm. and make no mistake everybody <clears throat> there are no other essential oils companies out there do this. That, that are yeah sourcing the way we do that have a philanthropic arm that has that covers the administrative fees is there there isn't no mm. so you can yeah, you will find. Yeah, you will find oils of the same price or higher yeah. um, that have none of this background going on. Mm -hmm. So, and I wouldn't even say they have a, a philanthropic um, arm, Margie. I would say they have a philanthropic head. Yeah, like, yeah. That's Sorry. how I think they seriously. It's service first. It is everything about DoTerra is service first, and then <clears throat> you know, it, it, it is just it's our responsibility to serve. Yeah. And like, I'll just say what Jared was saying to us all. So we were there with the sourcing, the co-impact sourcing guy, Jared Moon. And like, he's a, you know, he went to university. He's, he's an economist. He's like an ex-commodities trader. Like that was his job was to make money. And he just would lose it. Like when he's explaining um, our co-impact sourcing model, he's just like, I mean, I feel um he's just he's just like i don't get it like it just it's ludicrous it doesn't make any sense um and he would tell us how he would ask doTERRA every meeting every chance he got you need to put these oils up like you need to put the price up you need to put the price up it doesn't make any sense um and they just every time would say no so like i don't think you'll find any company that would do that and yeah and he would tell us how much he struggled with it like that being his day-to-day job like stuff that's what he knows so well um and just coming into a company that's like yeah no no yeah we run that at a loss no we're not going to do that we're not going to up that we're not going to charge that and he's just banging his head against the wall so mm. to see him struggle with that and explain that that was pretty powerful for me I think that really highlighted um, oh. how strong their morals and their ethics are as a company. It's just completely unwavering. So I feel for us here as a collective, if we had any doubt about this company, this doesn't exist anymore. No. It really doesn't. They really highlighted it on every step of the trip, I think, for me anyway. Yeah. yeah. There was a question there about uh, whether it took long for the Nepalese people to trust um doTERRA um and the also the important thing to note is that we have a Nepalese team uh we have a co-impact sourcing on ground team in Rajesh Rajesh you say it most incredible smart oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah um he has the most incredible smile and he's the most intelligent man that I you know one of the most intelligent men I've ever met and it works our our model works because we have their people working with them 
as I said, like we're not we're not Westerners coming in and saying we're doing this and we're going to do this for you and and bang bang bang. Give us your give us your royals. No, yeah. it's just it's them. It's them on ground, and we we kind of there's there's always that translator between us. So it mm. wasn't it wasn't Jared talking to the distiller. It was Rajiv. <laughs> Rajiv. Rajiv. Uh, you know. Yeah, that was that, that was good, right? And I got yeah, be careful. Your husband's on here. I can see him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, he knows I he knows I can't roll the tongue. <laughs> <of my head>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's late at night. Tired. <clears throat> um, Practice rolling your eyes. Yeah. So yeah, so that that's how it works. It works. Um, it's such yeah. a beautiful model and to have uh, Pratik, um, you know, the head of Choice Humanitarian, like they were just, they were so grateful. They were all so very, very humbled and they kept apologising for not having this, like, standards. Like, I don't know what I was expecting, but what we got was incredible. Like, seriously, guys, there was no electricity in our schoolroom um, and they came in prior to we, to we actually arriving. They came in and and hooked up some crude wiring so we could power our iPhones, you know, charge our iPhones in our in our schoolroom while we slept. We had lights on out the front at night <clears throat> so we could walk to the toilet. Yeah, they put yeah. lights in the toilet. Like they did, they did all those things. And it was actually more than doTERRA had expected because doTERRA kitted us up um, like crazily thinking that it was going to be exactly like last year. They put on headlamps, they gave us headlamps, they, they did all that, you know, they, so they said, bring your, like, bring your pocket knife, bring this, bring that, like, do, do everything you could. Um, and we had no expectation of having any Wi-Fi coverage or anything like that, like none of that. We all kind of said goodbye to our families and said, yep, see you in 10 days type of thing. But um, they, did, they went above and beyond, yet they were still so apologetic that they thought it was not good enough for us. Not that we gave them that idea, just that they, that's the kind of people that they are. They just want to keep pleasing you because they're <clears throat> grateful for us mm. and i will say it's, i believe it's also because and i was chatting to Pratik on the last night it's because they're they're so genuinely grateful with what doTERRA and healing hands have brought to the country that they feel like what they have done for us to say thank you was not enough yeah even though we feel like we were treated like kings and it really comes down to the genuine love that we felt from them towards us and yeah. towards each other. And a lot of people have said <clears throat> how they expected to go over and help everyone there. And then um, we ended up getting all the help. Mm. Yeah. Like it ended up helping us a lot more, I think. Really? So why don't you build on that, Christina? Because we kind of witnessed, as your room buddies, we kind of witnessed this really beautiful transformation for you, so, which was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps on unfolding in every Voxer message. So can you share that? Um, yeah, I've got heaps of notes, actually. Oh, so hi, I'm Christina, those don't know. Um, okay, one thing I wanted to touch on first, um, from what Danielle was saying about how um, Choice Humanitarian and the Nepalese, like, trusting them and stuff. Um, personally, so I think I was the only person on the trip that was Indigenous. So, like, coming from New Zealand, I'm Indigenous to New Zealand, and there's, like, a bunch of my team on here that are also. So, for me to see um, choice coming in and not forcing any particular way on the Nepalese people, that had, like, a massive impact for me because they came in and they, they were just like, what can we do to help, help you not we're going to tell you what you need to get to, to get better. It was basically um, like a collaboration of local Nepalese leaders. Um, they all came together and they together decided what they would need from Choice and then Choice came up with a way um, to provide that. So when you're asking about did it take them long to trust them, yeah, it didn't because it was themselves um, and they were just, showing them the tools like a lot of them are illiterate um you know none of them had ever put in a resource plan any of that stuff so um choice just kind of met them where they're at and helped them with that kind of stuff so it didn't 
squash their culture or change their culture or demand anything of them, but show them how they can still keep their culture while um, adjusting and maximizing the most out of the, um, like the government, you know, like when things come in and then they, they, they built two schools, like with his man's money within four months. And that's because the um, communities that have been working with choice knew about resource consents, knew about gov like what to apply for and knew what they needed. Um, so, you know, they'd been taught all that kind of stuff. So, you know, like the power of education um, and empowering the women and stuff, that was like a massive thing. So I, I really felt the power there and I felt how important that was. Um, and it really made me respect um, that doTERRA chooses to partner with um, the locals and not like, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, Christina, while you're on this, can you just explain to everybody who choice is? We keep saying choice, choice, choice. And I don't even think I realised who choice was five days into the trip. I just thought they were our tour guides. Oh, no. So, yeah, so Choice Humanitarian are an NGO, um, like a non-government organisation. Yeah, like a charity. But they, they come in and they, they've been working in the area for over 20 years. So, um, like, we got a massive example of it, like, like what happens when you educate the um, community instead of just doling out money to them. So we had one... One school where we'd built an agricultural lab, I think, with like under 12 months with them um, to help them, you know, get the most out of their winter green and all their other agricultural resources. And then just literally across the campus was this monstrosity of a building that had, it had been in progress for five years, completely funded by the Indian government, and it wasn't even like a quarter completed. It was a and it, Yeah, and it just showed mm. the difference that when you sit back and you wait for a government to decide whether you're important enough and when to put the money into it and, like, you know, other things come up, is when you partner with somebody um, and you make those decisions and you take that into your own hands, like, it really, it really showed the difference for me. So I thought that was pretty, pretty amazing. Um, what else was I talking about? Oh, yeah. And for me... Another thing that I, I took massively from it was, oh, this all goes in together, but I took away how massive a privilege it is what we do. So, like, the majority of them are potato farmers. So, you know, they'll plant their crops and, and, and they don't get any money for three months. Like, it takes three months to get money from those potatoes. So, in the meantime, they could starve or they could have to take out loans from a loan shark like just to live and then you know their potatoes come and they spend it all on paying back debt because they couldn't live day to day so the opportunity that the wintergreen has given them is cash in hand daily so you know it's not their main source of income but it helps them survive day to day and so that's a massive thing for me like you know they're not having to rely on on you know dodgy dodgy loans and stuff and it really made me think that when we sit here and we think, you know, um, like well, the, the whole reason I started with doTERRA is when I had a baby, like all of my power was taken away from me. I was literally dependent on my husband. And I hate that. Like, I hate that. I want to be independent. I like to have my own money. And I'm literally at home. I can't work, you know. And to think that by building a business, by sharing oils, I could create security for myself for my family, um, you know, could create this income. These women, they strap on 33 kilos. Like I think I'm a superhuman because I'm selling oils with a baby and I'm tandem feeding and I need a re an award. Like, you know, if you want to give me an award, it's okay. But like they strap on 33 kilos. They have their baby on the front of them. They have a baby in their belly just to feed their family day to day. And I'm like, I don't want to ring that person. I'm scared. They might say no. Can I add but, something on there oh. that I really love is, you know, one of doTERRA's mottos is to be known as the company that gets people out of debt, right? And yeah. we apply that just to ourselves. But it's yeah. also on the ground with these people that are working to produce our oils. Like it's, yeah. it's keeping these Nepalese families 
out of debt because they're getting paid on the spot. So it's not yeah. just us that become debt free, they become debt free too. Yeah. And I will tell you that we get the easier <laughs> we get the easier way out <laughs> with um, you know, smell this oil, would you like to buy some? Like, you know, I, I walked up and down with that that thing on my head for like 10 seconds was like, break, I need, I need a break. I need to tap out. Somebody help me. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like the privilege that we get um, to make this money and the security for our family. And I just, it really hit home for me. And I really feel sorry for anyone that came in my path telling me how hard this job was because they got it. Like they just got an earful because it's not like, you know, like we sell these oils, we make, you know, we create money, we create abundance for ourselves, but we help these harvesters, like we do so much good. So if you turn around and tell me that it's hard, I'm probably gonna, you know, rip your head off. But that was just a massive take home for me. And also the biggest take, another take home was like, the biggest impact we can have is to make more money, like be super prosperous, um, because, the only way to make serious change is like Margie did a whip around with us and we we donated between the 43 of us enough money to to build a toilet like a, a like a, a toilet in the community like and that's just 43 of us chucking in a bit of money and it it built something that is going to you know like mm -hmm. just make such a huge impact um, on the community um, and it wasn't just the wintergreen and things that we did we went to like um, you know women's cooperative and we bought toys for our kids like our spoiled kids <laughs> we bought toys for them and and us doing that kind of stuff the, the things that they 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 made crocheted toys by hand it meant that they could go to school for nine months you know so that means that we're passing on this education um, to these kids and these these women and like most kids there don't, most women don't go to school from grade, what, grade 10 and 11? Yeah, so, that, so, so they, they don't even get educated. Even and a lot of that, yeah, is money. And the thing is, they don't turn around and ask for a handout. What they're doing at the school is they're building a distillery there. So parents are going to be able to come and bring the wintergreen leaves um, and, you know, create their own income and their own wealth and build, um, make the school a boarding school. Because their kids are walking three hours one way and three hours back. Like my kid loses it if I ask her to walk down the hallway because it's hard. Like, and this is what their kids go through, you know, and they don't just sit there and say, oh, well, can you 43 people sponsor the whole school? They go and they say, well, we've got all this wintergreen growing. We're going to make a distillery here and we're going to bring the leaves in and we're going to create our own wealth. Like, Wasn't you know, out doTERRA, they wouldn't have that. No, and the impact that education had on these children was just so profound. Like, our kids get up kicking and screaming, not wanting to go to school. These yeah, kids these... went to school, like, an hour and a half early when we were there to come and hang out with us. Like, it was such a privilege to be in that space with them. And it's such a beautiful thing that they hold so close to their heart because it's so special for them to be educated over there. Yeah. It's so awesome. And, you know, in saying that, you know, how Maggie went around and collected that money... We've also spoken about um, sponsoring scholarships for the children in the school. So there's probably going to be 43 children that can continue to go to school next year because we have abundance to be able to do that. So that's what, another reason why getting to Diamond and above is really important because you can then give from that overflow. And something yeah. that we take for granted like education can be gifted and we don't even have to blink an eye at it because we have so much to give from being so prosperous. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then what Danielle was saying about me, like, one of the things I noticed about myself when I was there is that I would, a lot of the time, put myself last, just being a mum, you know, I'd just go into straight survival mode, you know, like, put the kids to bed, wake up, work from 12 till 3, go to bed, feed one of them, wake up, like, not healthy. Um, and then when I was there, it just made me think, like, what good am I going to do if I burn out in like six months or 12 months or, you know, like it's, it made me also think that I had the idea of giving completely wrong in my head. You know, I had a bit of a martyr um, idea in my head that there was this only one way to give. 
And just like how Margie was saying that she turned up and wanted to just give everyone all her oils and take all my money. Like, I think we were all like that. Like, take my money, take my money. Um, but now it's like, like, yeah, I owe it to myself and, and my team and everyone to be the best me, um, you know, because I need to be doing this for a very long time. And I need to teach them how to do it for a very long time and not burn out. Um, and I think it's really important that um, because we're all so called to give, that we don't give too much, that we're losing ourselves. Because you're no good to anybody if you're going to do that. So that's a huge thing that I've taken away. And like I came home with just such determination to just sell these oils because everybody needs them. Um, mm. And but I've actually just spent the last four days taking care of myself a bit more. Um, so it's quite weird how that that like comes out. But yeah, those were my just my main takeaways. It's just you just have to we just have to share them. Like we, we have to share them. We have to get out there. We have to tell everybody all this stuff because we just live in such a privileged part of the world. Like I'm sure those like like you know, Chloe was saying, I'm sure those women over there, if we told them, you know, hey, you can make all this money by sharing these oils, they would be like, cool, because this 33 kilos of wintergreen is heavy and I've had enough. Like, I don't want to do that. Um, and me and Lorraine, we walked past a woman, a Tibetan woman on the street. She had no money, like no job. And she was sitting there weaving like all these beautiful handcrafts. You know, she couldn't afford the butt, like she'd have to catch three buses to get there or walk 12 Ks. And she did it every day, rain or shine, um, because she had to, to make money. And I'm like, you know, oh, I have to I have to do a class tomorrow. Like my life's hard. Like mm -hmm. it's just not like just, yeah, get out of your own way. Get over it. I think that's my. <laughs> you, the classes. I think that's what you're saying. The classes. Mm -hmm. Um, add in or um, just build on something that you said Missy um, it we are so privileged and we did an exercise one night um, so every single morning we would start with a overview of what was going to happen that day and then every single night we would do a recap and reflection um, and one of the uh, reflections that we had Lindsay who was another of the choice um, humanitarian leaders she was a beautiful beautiful woman who used to be a wellness advocate uh, but closed her account and now is considering enrolling again because she was so inspired by all of us but um, she was talking about the differences between uh, what we had seen in, in the Nepalese community um, now that we had seen extreme poverty and what and, and us so and the Western society so she was asking us like what are they lacking what, what are these people lacking? And we were like, well, you know, adequate shelter, um, enough food, education. Running water. Running water, toilet water. <laughs> um, you know, basic hygiene practices, stuff like this. Um, and then she was saying, but, you know, and what about us? What are we lacking? And we're like, well, um, we're not really like like we've got we've got big fancy houses and big fancy cars and um you know we've got more money than we know what to do with and uh, what are we lacking and when we did the the comparison it was actually that they weren't as they were lacking assets they were asset poor but they were emotionally rich so they had their family and they had their gratitude and they had happiness and we have all the money and all the shiny bling things and it's never enough for us you know when when you think about it when you we when we earn more money we we spend more money we buy a bigger car or we buy a bigger house or we we upgrade our life according to how much money we earn we don't concentrate enough on finding more happiness or being more gracious or having more gratitude we don't concentrate on that enough so we're actually emotionally uh we're, we're in we're in emotional poverty so there was one specific moment where we went and visited a house that had actually been rebuilt 
by choice and after an earthquake. And there was a lot of backstory, which I won't go into, but when we saw the rebuilt house, my first, my actual initial reaction was to pity the family because I thought, my God, this is the rebuilt house and it's smaller than my bathroom. And I felt like, I felt sorry for them. And then when we started talking to them and Pratik was um, interpreting for us and he was saying, how are you? How do you feel now that you're in your new home? And they were freaking happy. Like they were happy. They had more, more than they'd ever had in a relationship. This is a husband and wife who had previously been beating her because he was so unhappy. And he had, they, that had all changed because they had a, a house over there and they had a roof over their head and they had a stable home for their two children. And my perception changed like that. As soon as I heard them say, we are happy, it was like, who the hell am I to feel sorry for you? Because I'm comparing my level of comfort to your level of comfort and assuming that you haven't got as much as me. And so I should feel sorry for you. It was just such a freaking slap across my face. Like it was like, you know, and I think that, again, it was just another thing that we kind of learnt along in, in Nepal is just to, you don't need, you don't need the best of everything you need to have yet. You need to have your health. Like Missy said, you need to have your health. You need to have your heart and you can, you've got everything. Yeah. And like I how think- many classes, oh, sorry, like how many classes do we do? And it's like, what's your number one issue? Stress. Mm. can't sleep like mm. we have all this stuff and we're just so everyone like the classes I do and the people are just so stressed or uh, unhappy about things and it just really made you like Lindsay would actually stand up there and say go out there and fill your emotionally void cups <laughs> and we'd be like oh yeah okay <laughs> like we've got it no really highlights to you how little you need to actually be happy I think that was yeah. really powerful. You know, we <clears throat> get so caught up in the stuff mm. that we forget the happiness part. And after seeing these children run around with a bubble stick, yeah. like the happiest kids in the world, we're like, no, no, my five-year-old doesn't need a Pee Wee 50 for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we presented them with the toys at the, at the end of it, which to be honest, wasn't it, it wasn't a huge amount. It was like maybe four boxes or four or five boxes of, of toys. They lost their freaking minds. Like yeah. they were just like, namaste, namaste, namaste. Like they, they were, went crazy. And it was like that, that's years and years of uh, resources and, and toys and things, entertainment that they have to play with now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the knock on effect from all of this is we've all turned around and gone, um, we have to go back and teach classes. We have yeah. to go back and nail it and be prosperous because we have to go back because we actually have to go back. We need to do more. We need to give more to Healing Hands. We need to partner more with Choice because doTERRA and Healing Hands and Choice have nailed it, right? They, they, not, they don't just give them money, but doTERRA has partnered with Choice because they're on the ground giving them the time that they need along with the funds. So the education that they need to implement and use this money. So you're hearing us telling you all these stories, which is not even all of it. And this is why we've come and said, okay, we have bees in our bonnets and we need to just share it with you. So. Because we have so much work to do. We do. We all have so much work to do. We are a company that's 10 years old and we've only just started to scratch the surface of, of, Mm our service like we have so much to do and the more of us that get on board mm. with that and and know that it that we've got our work our life's work ahead of us yeah i apologize in advance for my team when i bite your head off <laughs> it'll probably mm. last about a month i think but mm. it's just yeah we just can't we were all we all sat there and i think in the third or fourth day we just all looked at each other and we just said out Everyone in our team needs to hit diamond. Every single one of them needs to come here. Every single person needs to to experience this. And it's like, yeah, we got to be in our bonnet. We were just like, get out of your way. Get out of your way. Yeah. I think it's actually why they take us to Pokhara. 
when um, at the end of it to do some tourist stuff because I think if we all came home directly from the village, mm. oh wow, we would have just, <laughs> we would have, yeah, I think just let rip on anybody that was in earshot because we're just so pumped, so pumped. And I think they needed to take us to um, Pokhara to do a little bit of the tourist stuff to kind of bring us down because we were like on a mad mission. So Terry we- even got that right, didn't they? Like, yeah. Because we heard from others, um, some of the guys that came, their wives had come last last um, year and they'd actually told us, you know, please go home and be gentle on your family because they said their wives had come home and they were just, well, what's wrong with you? Like, what's happening? Like, their wives came home and were just like, bam, that's it. Like, um, Rob was saying, you know, Kim came home and hit Blue Diamond that month. Like she just got off the plane, went straight to work. Because, and because that's how you feel. You're just so possessed with this urge and this push because you see what you do. Because I think before a lot of us could have would be sitting here and just be like, oh, what's this one person I've added to my team? And, you know, what's this one difference? What's this one order? Um, and now you go home and you're like, every person counts. <laughs> like every single person I know is getting these oils. Um, and you just get this push. And I think that's that's why we really had to wind down a little bit before coming home, mm. or I think I would have been unbearable. Mm. And I think um, still on the theme of DoTerra nailing it and getting it right, and I know that Lorraine's having trouble um, getting on with this, so um, she wanted to talk about belief in ourselves, in our culture, in the company, and... Even more, we want to reassure you in every way, in the compensation plan, in this model of how we share and teach classes in people's homes and one-on-one and face-to-face, everything, all of it, the executives have nailed it. They nailed it with every little thing that they did for us overseas. They had a medic for us. They had security guy hanging around us. Um... They've nailed the way that we're of service and we empower in homes, overseas. It's just embedded in everything they do. Um, You are so in the right place here. I think when we're over in Nepal, we felt so much because doTERRA calls us to, if you've put your hand up and you're here, please know you've already got a huge heart. You're already seeing and feeling so much. just be open to it, opening it even more. And um, it's okay to go deep like this. And I know, Missy, you can talk on this probably. Because um, in the beginning, you would have been like, I don't want to go sit with them. Or I'm just going to put my earphones on. And it's like, yeah, like why are you crying? What the hell? <laughs> I saw you cry. Oh, yeah, I cried heaps. <laughs> I cried heaps. But the thing is, I think if I was at home with my with my friends or my family, I'd feel a little funny about crying because I'm not really, I'm not a big cry. I'm more cry if I get angry. Um, but you're just so, I don't know, you're just like, oh, my God. Like, I think if someone was in front of me, I would have shook them. Like, I just wanted to shake everybody, like, don't tell me you can't afford this. Don't tell me you don't have time. Just just, just be quiet and just do it. Like, just take this responsibility on and be grateful that you've found it. You know, like, if you break it down, you don't have to go to university to, be, to have this awesome opportunity. You don't have to compete with 20 other people for this job. You don't, you know, you, you, there's no prerequisites to become um, a doTERRA seller you you just have to buy oils and you can access all of this um, you know abundance so it's just like what other job can you just walk into and have access to that so it's like take that responsibility and run with it and you know do it justice like do it justice because you're not just doing it for yourself so like I think we worked out between the room like the room we had influence over about 150,000 people, just ourselves with our team. So, cause you know, we had presidential diamonds there. So oh, it probably was more than 150, but you know, like going home and having 150,000 people being able to be influenced from what we learned, that will just ripple out. And like, 
you know, how can we do the Nepalese and everyone a disservice by just going home and getting stuck in our own minds and our, and our own issues? Like, think about, if you think about all of that, you just get over yourself. Like, yeah. I think that was huge. And, and I also want to say, like, the doTERRA people that came, they didn't have a special room with beds and warm showers. They were on the floor in the sleeping bags. They were in the squatty potties with us. They were building the pav pavers with us. They were lifting, they did not have any special treatment. And if you didn't know who they were, you wouldn't even know they were doTERRA executives. Well, you know, like you would have no idea who worked for the company and who were wellness advocates. Affecting more and more people and it'll come. Like everyone asks like, how do you build a diamond organization? One person at a time. Like mm. one person at a time. You know what I just kind of got from that conversation as to why I think we felt so deeply in that space that we shared for 10 days is because our emotionally empty cup was filled up by those people. So we actually had the opportunity to feel so deeply yeah. and you all need to feel that because we are so deprived <laughs> of emotional filling and to go to a place like Christina said that we go to thinking we're going to heal them and they heal you on the flip side. Yeah. To have a heart filled like that and to feel from that space. It's, it, we could not come back and share like this. Because yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're sharing from the overflow of, of what we've experienced because it was so, <clears throat> they gave us so much. Yeah. Out of all of this, we hope that you got this. Um, <clears throat> get on the trips because they're fun. You'll meet heaps of different doTERRA wellness advocates and create long-lasting relationships and learn so much. Um, your life will completely change <clears throat> emotionally and also physically. Um, the, believe that doTERRA has got this right. Believe in the compensation plan. Believe in the business model. Get over the <clears throat> multi-level marketing thing. And if you're struggling with that, talk to one of these people here because they can help you get rid of that. Um, Know the difference between co-impact and healing hands and new choices. Share it in your classes boldly and proudly. Um, remember that this is a privilege for you. You've got a choice and it's your duty. You're here. Um, when those obstacles pop up, see them. No thank you, not right now, and just push it aside and go and help one more person. Yeah. Just chunk away at that mountain by helping one more person. Be prosperous, be abundant because you will have more from your overflowing cup to share. The world wants us to do that. I promise you. Nepal was saying thank you, doTERRA, for doing what you're doing. Um, and don't pity. We don't need to pity anyone. Um, just be prosperous and support these causes that we're blessed to be part of, doTERRA Healing Hands and Choice, because it's with our money and the time and the systems that they've got in place, again, doTERRA has nailed it, because there's long-lasting change being implemented. <clears throat> um, yeah. We hope you got all of that from all of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, because as, as a mum, like, what kind of world do I want my girls growing up in? Like, I want this kind. I don't want this empty, soulless one. <laughs> like where it's all about the bigger house and, and all the stuff and all the things and all me 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 you know like they're gonna see mum and all of her friends and all of her team just having this massive impact so much bigger and they're just going to grow up thinking that's normal and they should yeah. like they yeah. i want them to grow up thinking you know it's normal to help and it's normal to do stuff and it's it's normal to be you know prosperous and abundant because that's how you help the most like they're just going to grow up thinking this is so normal and they're not going to have all these blocks to get over like I do, you know? Like, they're just going to grow up with that example that we're leading and, you know, and, yeah, and just trust doTERRA pretty much. Like, if you ever get stuck, like, just shut out the noise and just listen to doTERRA because we were lucky enough to meet all these people that have been doing it for since, since the company started pretty much. And, yeah. Trust doTERRA, yeah, yeah. Mark is right. That's just, if anything else, you know, I will never, ever waver in my belief in this company ever again. 
Yeah, because I am a reformed skeptic <laughs> for network marketing and all that kind of, you know, woo-woo and I just embrace the woo-woo, just get the crystals out or whatever and put that bowl thingy on you and I put a singing bowl on my chest and banged it. <laughs> you did that. You yeah. Did that. He banged it. He didn't do this. He banged it. Shut for a thingy. Well, whatever. Like, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it. I'm messaging the people, you know, and everyone that messages me. Yeah. yeah. Make, everyone make. that messages me back with, oh, it's a bit weird. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not listening to your rubbish anymore. Just get them. Yeah. Not like that in a nicer way. But you know what I mean. I'm just. With that intention. Just a commitment to, to take the action. Yeah. To do service work. Just because don't half, yeah. No more half-assing it. Like. Those Nepalese can't afford for me to half-ass it anymore. No. And I just want to say on a little bit of a parting note, um, like namaste from, from me to you, all of you who have firstly showed up on this call. Namaste. But for showing up in this space, because it takes a really big, brave, bold person to stand in this space. It can be scary and it's confronting and it's such a, it's a, a, just a journey in itself on a personal level. So thank you because just by stepping into this, you're already creating change and it's, you have no idea the impact that you're having. So from my heart to yours, keep going because you're, you're bloody killing it and it's awesome. Namaste. 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 Right. That'll do me. If anyone else wants to... <clears throat> Fine. Does anybody want to add anything? Like, as in, if the five of us stop talking or the four of us stop, one, two, three, four, does anybody want to say, does anyone want to pipe up? Come on. Yeah, come on. Unmute yourself. Oh, Jody York, of course. Get in there, love. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, it has come listening to your words and your belief and your commitment to not just creating your own little bubble of, of abundance, but to, to explode it out to the rest of the world. Um, I'm doing Diamond Club and it's our last month. <laughs> and you, your message just made me go, stop complaining. Oh my God, out of area classes, yay. You know, I've got that, ex that opportunity to do that. You know, get out of my own way with, you know, um, I'm, I'm big on overcoming fears and all that kind of stuff. And, and your message today or tonight has just been golden because I have, you know, because of tiredness and whatever else, in the last couple of days, hit the panic button and gone, oh, my gosh, you know, am I doing the right thing? Is this all worth it? What you were saying before um, it, about, you know, I don't want my kids to see me stressed out and um, tired and, you know, that's not why I'm doing this. But it is so easy for us to, to dip into that world. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for pulling me out of my little woe, <laughs> bubble of woe, and getting me back on track because, babies, I'm, I'm back on track. So thank you. Thank you for Ooh. receiving that. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. You did it, Jodie. You pulled yourself out, love. <clears throat> you were open to it. Okay, let's finish this Diamond Club strong, Jodie. <clears throat> I'm with you. Yes. <laughs> Go. Anyone else? <clears throat> That's okay. Maybe we can catch up again in a month or so, <clears throat> bring up a few more topics or another topic that's burning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We'll miss each other too much anyway. I'd love to bring up some more topics and like business stuff as well. I think having four different people from four, five, sorry, Lorraine, different people from five different networks and ways of building. Wow. Like I said, I learned so much about my business in 10 days that I never knew before. I think it's such a powerful thing to bring to our teams. You know, we've all had, we all have a different strength. And to highlight it in a space and being able to come together and share it with our teams in this open vicinity is pretty cool. But I'm sure Lorraine would have said, but this is, this is getting back to the culture that, the, that doTERRA was when it was first yeah. found. Everyone, every single leader, 
no matter where they were, worked together. Everyone knew each other's teams. And I know that with change and with growth, then that can be lost. And that's what did happen apparently with doTERRA. Um, but what we heard from the founders um, at Nepal was that this is very much the same as when we began. Um, so I really, I like, I want to thank you guys because I think that we, we have a, a, a like the responsibility to work with our teams, but we have the responsibility to, to share it everywhere. Right. And that means if, you know, if we have information or, or ways of leadership that we can, um, that we can, you know, share with you guys that, that may, may resonate with you, uh, rather than, you know, your upline or your cross line or whatever, um, then why not do that? Why not share that? And, you know, for the greater good. So it's freaking awesome. So I, I want to just um, encourage you all to anchor into Wintergreen this month, the oil of productivity. I know the emotions and essential oils book says it's about surrender, but my teaching is about productivity. So productivity, get onto your um, lemon myrtle for your leadership. And I love a bit of Lutanti for inspired action. Like just rock the shit out of the rest of the month and the rest of the rest of your doTERRA career. Yeah. Yeah. And totally. Yeah. Just like we were saying, like flip the mindset, you know, next time you feel like you like lose an enrollment or lose something, you know, you're not, you're gaining someone that is buying oils. Like just buy the oils wherever, <laughs> just get them. Cause every single bottle just impacts everyone. And I think once you get that mindset, um, it just really helps you go forward. It really stops you lingering on, on the things that can block you. Because when you see the, the greater vision, it's just all about getting everybody the oils. Yeah. Just getting it done, you know. And Chloe, you are welcome to bring some woo to my team. Thank you. Any day. I'll bring some numbers to yours. <laughs> I'm dealing with some numbers crunched in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we will be doing the cross collabing. Nice. We'll organise that. <clears throat> yeah. We'll get it sorted for next month. In the meantime, everybody. Um, go and teach some classes. Yes. Yeah. Namaste. 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 Namaste, everybody. Good night. No, you all have to just namaste. namaste. <laughs> all of you. The people that I can see are not namasteing. Some are, some aren't. <laughs> namaste. You can't get up. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. All right. Love you guys. See you guys.